So we expected a turnaround at Michigan under Jim Harbaugh, but many of us said that's coming down the road. And maybe it truly is, but uh, the early returns are extremely impressive. We bring in Anthony Broom of Mason Brew to talk up the Michigan football team coming off what was, to me, an unexpected drubbing of BYU at home, 31 nothing. Anthony, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, anytime. So, wow. I got to tell you, here was my deal on Saturday. My daughter had homecoming festivities during the day. I taped the Michigan BYU game. I was expecting to, you know, at least lock in on the fourth quarter and see what happened down the stretch in what was, to me, going to be an exciting game. And then I kept seeing the scores come in, and uh, I didn't really catch that much, Anthony. So this is what I got from this game: is the the number that jumps off the stat sheet that is just incredible is 105 yards of total offense for BYU. So that Michigan front seven, I did watch the highlights, was just dominant. Yeah, that was I'm, – I'm 24 hours later, I'm still extremely impressed by what we saw out of them. Um, defense has been has been very good, but BYU really was their first, first test uh, defensively in a few weeks. Uh, it's a, it was an offense that had performed well in the last few weeks. Uh, Tanner Mangum had been uh, – one of the early stars of the college football season, and he was he was never able to get comfortable at all. Uh, Michigan's defensive line absolutely mauled the Cougars up front. Uh, the secondary was excellent in covering some of BYU's uh, bigger, more physical receivers, and uh, just an all-around dominant uh, performance that really backed up that Michigan's defense is one of the best in the country. And it's it's truly exceptional when you lead 31 nothing at halftime, and typically there's a lot of garbage points and yardage after that, and Michigan just said, no, no none of that either. Uh, we're we're going to shut you down the entire game. That's incredible. A uh, lot was made, uh, Anthony, of course, coming into this game that BYU had a number of very sizable receivers with a lot of height that would be difficult to manage, but I know that the front seven and the, and the pressure put on Mangum took care of a lot of that, but still uh, they weren't winning um, a contest down the field. No, Jordan Lewis was excellent shutting down uh, Mitch Matthews, who's a six foot six guy. Um, a lot of bigger six foot five, six foot four receivers that BYU had. Uh, there was just there was no space to throw. Um, the defense swarmed to the football, so Mangum couldn't make plays with his feet outside of a few early on, but. Um, I mean, 105 yards total, even Jim Harbaugh said, uh, told us after the game, um, you know, he's never been a part of a shutout like that. That was truly, I mean, it was as impressive as it gets defensively for Michigan. And maybe, maybe it was just for a week, but I mean, through four games, they've, they've come to play and, and they've backed up all the hype coming into this year. And Anthony, we talked about it even last season, uh, considering the difficult position that this defense was put in on a regular basis by all the three and outs in the bad field position, they they, they uh, played extremely well, again, considering the circumstances. So I, I think it's a very slippery slope and dangerous to just connect the dots and say, because they beat them and they beat them and they beat them, look how good we are. But when the dots start to go in a bunch of different directions and build up a pretty good sample size, this BYU team was no joke coming into it. You could say that they were road weary or whatever the deal is, but they just went to the Rose Bowl the week before and played a UCLA team that people are are, are, are projecting to possibly make the college football playoff, and they played that game down to the final possession. One point, they beat a really good Boise State team. They beat a pretty good Nebraska team on the road. So this Michigan win over BYU is pretty substantial. Yeah, uh, BYU, I know a lot of people were kind of using the uh, tough schedule as, I don't want to say an excuse, but maybe a reason as to why they came out flat on um, in the game on Saturday. Uh, Michigan just just beat the hell out of them on both sides of the football, up front on offense, up front on defense. Um, that was a team that was tired because Michigan made them tired, um, and it just kind of snowballed as the game went on. BYU wasn't able to do anything. You know, I'm not a big believer of the – the transitive property of, of football. But I mean, talking about a UCLA team that uh, just barely yanked it out against BYU, they go to Arizona and then beat up on a rich rods, uh, um, Arizona team. And then Utah goes into uh, Oregon and, and puts up a 62, uh, 62 points on, um, on Oregon. So, I mean, that's, uh, you can't, you can't use that to justify how Michigan played against Utah because it was still a loss, but, I mean, all things considered, after four games, you have to feel pretty good about 
about the team going forward. And now maybe that we're seeing, you know, in those Michigan State and Ohio State games that they'll have at home, where maybe, you know, the chances weren't looking so good. Maybe, maybe they have a chance there now, and we'll see as the weeks continue to go along. Yeah, Utah doing what it did to Oregon, taking that uh, yeah transitive uh, uh, process in the other direction, looking good for the Wolverines at this point. Four games in, looking at Big Ten play now. Do we know anything about uh, Debbie and Smith, uh, 125 yards rushing? I've, I've been extremely impressed with his will on the field. This kid is such a tough runner, but he's shown us a little shake in recent weeks as well and really adding to his game. So uh, do we know any, anything about his health? Uh, after the game, he uh, he was one of the first people out to talk to the media. He wasn't a walking boot. They said that that was precautionary. He expects to play next week. Um, as far as his improvement has gone, uh, he's he said that his vision he thinks has gotten better because he's he's been watching film with the offensive linemen. Um, he's able to see the holes that they're trying to open up for him in the film room, and he's kind of applied that to the field. And uh, you know he's been excellent. He doesn't go down on first contact. He's not. He might not be their most talented running back, but he's their best running back right now because he fights for extra yards. Uh, the legs are always churning, and um, he's come up with quite a few big plays in the first few weeks. You know, Anthony, we talked during the offseason about the offensive line uh, not doing its job in recent years, but coming back with a lot of experience. So is it going to be the case of a bad offensive line just having more games under it belt and continuing to be bad? But that's not the case with this group. Uh, very much an improvement there. Yeah, it's every week it's gotten a little bit better regardless of who the competition is. I feel like um I feel like they're starting to get more of a consistent push. It's not always there, but their pass protection's been pretty darn good. Uh run the run game has improved a little bit each week. They're starting to open up more holes. Um just been just very solid from from end to end on that offensive line and even it, with the fullbacks and the tight ends are starting to block better and and maybe when they some of the things we saw them struggle with against Utah, you, they have that on film now. They've been improving it a little more each week. Um, and it's – I don't know how much better it's going to get, but it's been very impressive and no longer really an area of concern for them. And the offensive line obviously has to do its job for the quarterback and wide receivers to be able to display their talent. Uh, we talked a number of times during the offseason. You were high on the playmaking ability on the perimeter – and Amara Darbo's catch yesterday, just kind of a microcosm of, of what uh, they're capable of doing and him in particular. Yeah, I've been impressed with the wide receivers. Uh, I think that was another question mark coming into the year from a lot of people. Uh, I don't think people really thought that there was a, a, a bona fide number one receiver there, and there still really isn't. I like what Darbo's been able to do. Uh, I've been impressed with um, how, how physical he's played and um, – it's not been a burner, but he's been pretty shifty in the open field. Uh, that The catch speaks for itself. I still don't know how he made that play, but um, Cheston and Darbo have had chances down the field. They, they've looked pretty good, and uh, you know it, they're, they're starting to they're starting to come into their own. I think the timing with Jake Rudock starting to get a little bit better, and uh, you know, l like like we've talked about in the past, they just need Jake Rudock not to not to mess up. He's not going to win them a lot of games, but he can lose them games, and. Uh, as long as he gets the balls to his playmakers, which he does have them, they've shown that they have them now, passing game is going to be okay. Anthony Broom, who runs the show over at Mason Brew on the SB Nation platform for Michigan Athletics, joining us. Um, looking ahead, uh, before actually we, we talk very briefly about Maryland, because uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about there in regards to uh, their performance as far this season. Is there anybody out there for Michigan through four games that we don't know much about that we should know about that has been a key contributor to these victories. And we may know a lot about come the end of the season. Uh, Chris Wormley on the defensive line has been one of the big ones. They've, they've been rotating quite a few guys throughout there. And um, he had a pretty big first two weeks. I believe he had six tackles for loss in the first two games and he's still been very good. So that's a guy uh, Maurice Hurst on the defensive line is another one. Willie Henry really, I don't, I think a lot of people didn't, uh, didn't think the, the defensive line or, or thought maybe that would be sort of a concern coming into this year because they weren't really able to apply much pressure without blitzing last year. And uh, Michigan has blitzed a little more than they did last year, but the defensive line is doing its part to get to the quarterback. And um, I don't think it's 
I don't think that's far of a this. I don't think it's that far of a stretch to say they might be one of the better defensive lines in college football. So I'll give those guys kudos as a unit. Definitely, definitely, they have been rock solid. And again, 105 yards. And then when the game's a blowout, you don't give up garbage yardage. That that speaks volumes. Uh, Maryland comes into the Big Ten last year, Anthony, and kind of slots in where we would expect them to. They beat up on the bottom feeders. Uh, they were competitive against those teams in the mid-tier and were completely outclassed by the Ohio States and the like. Uh, Maryland this season, though, wow, they, they come off a game in which they were completely drubbed by a West Virginia team that I think is going to turn out to be pretty good, but uh, not a national championship contender. They lose to Bowling Green at home by three touchdowns. So this is the assignment for the Wolverines uh, coming up Saturday night. Yeah, I haven't done much. Uh, I haven't really seen them play. I haven't done much much research on them, but I do know, um, I mean, Michigan should win that game by multiple scores. I know it's on the road. I know it's a primetime start, but um, I think one of the, the bigger changes that will – take place in the Harbaugh era, and this goes without saying, they're going to beat the teams that they should beat, and they're going to beat them handily. And Maryland's just not very good. They lost quite a bit from last year. Um, I, I just don't see uh, how they – now they're, they're going to be on their home field. It's going to be a primetime game. It could be a pretty pretty solid atmosphere. Michigan might uh, have to fight the uh, fight the crowd a little bit early, but I don't see how they they lose this game or even win it by less than two scores. Okay, it's uh, Michigan traveling to Maryland for an 8 o'clock Eastern time game on Saturday night. Uh, Anthony Broom from J uh, Mason Brew joining us uh, to talk some Michigan football. Anthony, we always appreciate the insight. All right, thank you.